All right, in this video, we're going to do another example of finding an arc length of a parametric curve. So in B here, we have uh, x is given by e to the t cosine t, y is e to the t times sine t. So the first thing I'm going to start doing is just taking derivatives and squaring things. So if we take the derivative of x with respect to t, we'll have to use the, the product rule. The derivative of e to the t is just e to the t. We'll leave the cosine t alone. Uh, we'll leave the e to the t alone. The derivative of cosine t, though, will be negative sine t. So now if we take all of this stuff and we square it, we'll have e to the t times cosine t minus e to the t times sine t times e to the t times cosine t minus e to the t times sine t. So when we distribute e to the t times e to the t will give us e to the 2t. And then we'll have a cosine squared t. It looks like we'll get a, a negative a e to the 2t. And then we'll have cosine times sine. Notice, though, we're going to have two of those because we'll get the same thing on the inside. So we'll have negative 2 e to the 2t cosine times sine. And then we'll have a positive e to the 2t times sine squared t. So now we'll have to do the same thing for our dy dt. Uh, so first, let's find dy dt. Here we'll just get e to the t times sine t plus e to the t times cosine t when we do the product rule. And now when we square this stuff, we'll get the same thing as before, except we'll end up with an e to the 2t sine squared t plus 2 e to the t cosine t times sine t, and then we'll have a positive e to the 2t times cosine squared t. All right, so now I'm going to add those two expressions together. So I'm going to take that expression and add it to that expression. So let's forget about the stuff in the middle. So if we add those together, it looks like we'll have an e to the 2t cosine squared t plus e to the 2t sine squared t. Notice um, our negative 2 e to the t cosine sine and positive 2 e to the t cosine sine. Those are just going to cancel out. And then we'll be left with a positive uh, 2 e to the 2t um, sine squared. Or oh, I almost added those together. I am crazy. OK, let's try this one more time. We've got e to the 2t cosine squared t plus e to the 2t sine squared t. So certainly the middle terms cancel. These definitely don't combine. I, for some reason, wanted to think they were like terms, but they're not. So we've got e to the 2t sine squared t plus e to the 2t cosine squared t. Alrighty, so I guess we do have some like terms now, though. Um, we've got e to the 2t cosine squared, we've got e to the 2t cosine squared, so that's 2e to the 2t cosine squared t, plus, and then we would have the same thing, 2e to the 2t, except for sine squared t. Well, we can factor out the 2e to the 2t, we would be left with cosine squared t plus sine squared t, well, hey, we can just use our trig identity because that's equal to 1. So we're left with 2e to the um, 2t. All righty, so now we've done, I think, probably most of the hard part. So we're going to be integrating then in this case. So let's see, where did it go? Um, from 0 to pi. So we'll be integrating from 0 to pi. And we would have the square root of dx squared plus dy squared, but all of that reduces to just 2e to the 2t dt. And well, I'm going to break this up. You know, we could break this up as the square root of 2 times the integral from 0 to pi. We would have e to the 2t raised to the 1 half power. Alrighty, well, that leaves us with the square root of 2 times the integral from 0 to pi. Um, and that would just give us e to the t dt, so 2t times a half. 
And when we integrate, we'll just have the square root of 2 times e to the t from 0 to pi. And when we plug in our limits of integration, we'll have the square root of 2. We'll have e to the pi minus e to the 0 power. So it looks like our solution will be the square root of 2 times e to the pi minus 1. And that is it.